to begin with, we want to discuss some Postgres uh, benchmarking. Uh, people use PG Bench generally. And uh, there's minus S option to perform read-only benchmarks. And if you omit that, it will be read-write benchmarks. So let's say I'm upgrading from PG 14 to 16, or I'm turning on some logging parameter. I want to do some benchmarking, right? Uh, is this benchmark good enough? Uh, in general cases, uh, just to do minus S and uh, without minus S and then measure uh, for some time. Let's say for 30 minutes, you run that benchmark and then uh, you run the same with the other version and then compare. Is that good enough or accurate? Or what do you recommend in that case? Yeah, that, that's a, a really good question because when you benchmark, you really need to, to know what you want to measure. And the, the default benchmark uh, workloads in PG Bench uh, may, may not be the, the, the best to test the platform. For example, so you mentioned minus uh, S uppercase. It does a select only. So it's it's very easy because it, it selects uh, only. So, so you don't change anything on the database. Um, but basically, the default workload, select only or a simple update or the whole update, they are doing very short transactions from a client. So what I've seen is that many people run PG Bench, but actually most of the time is spent in network round trips or context switches, and finally very little on the database itself. So if you want to measure what the database does, you need to run with many, many clients and maybe the other bottleneck Generally, I, I I do not recommend using the default on PG Bench to do something like an application. Uh, also, when you use the update, it updates common tables. It has bottleneck. Um, PG Bench, in my opinion, has been made to test the internal of Postgres. For example, testing between two versions uh, if there are some performance regression on a specific lock or, 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 or specific thing. If you want to test your platform, for example, get an idea, you change the, the disk, the, the block device, um, then I would use something that is more aggressive on IO because I want to test the IO, uh, which means that not updating a few rows, but many rows. So basically, I prefer the micro benchmarks that focus exactly on what you want to test. If you want to test the the, the wall generation, the rating to the wall, if you want to test uh, the commit latency, then you will use specific workload for that. Also, one default that in PG Bench is not using prepared statements. So you spend also time parsing the query, and that's maybe not what 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 you want to measure exactly. Um, another thing about benchmarks, I I don't want to look only at the numbers, transaction per seconds and um, uh, or, or latency. I, I really want to look at the system when it runs to be sure that I'm using the system properly. If if I look only at the transaction per second uh, and I want to measure different disks, for example, or different options in the in the storage. The problem is that maybe I'm 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 not uh, bound on on disk access at all just because uh, I don't have enough memory for the workload in the in the server. So always look at the at the system uh, to see if what you want to stress is exactly what is stressed by the the workload. Okay, thanks, Frank. Uh, how about like simple case? Let's say I'm trying to increase the work man, right? Or I'm trying to turn on aggressive logging, right? Yeah. Can we benchmark those cases with the PG bench or even those cases you don't uh, really recommend this? So with PG bench, you can also run your specific workload. You can pass a file where you have your transaction. Uh, then if you, if you want to measure the work man, probably you want queries that read more rows than what the default PG bench does. You want to do some sort, you want to do some adjoin, you want to do something that uses 
uh, this work uh, area. But then you can build your own queries on your own tables and, and measure that. Yeah, just passing I... a file and uh, yeah. But also something PG Bench. So if you measure work memory, uh, then you want to see how it works with multiple sessions. PG Bench doesn't have a connection pool. The problem, PG Bench doesn't work like application should work. An application should have a connection pool. PG Bench doesn't. An application should use prepared statements, especially, especially for the complex statements to, to, to parse. Uh, PG Bench can do that, but, but doesn't uh, by default. Um, so there are man many things that you may have to do differently. So you can use PG Bench with a specific number of connection if you understand that that's the number you will have in your connection pool. So yeah, there's minus C option to give the number of concurrent connections. Yeah. Right? How about threads? There is also option to give threads, right? Like what do you recommend there? Like uh, how to increase threads, when to increase threads? Because people are confused about the threads option. The... Yeah, I'm always confused because the name are not really clear. The, the client for me are the number of, of sessions on the server. So yeah, they are the client connecting. But I see them more about the number of PG uh, uh, of backends that runs on the server. The threads is more on the client, uh, and that's also something to monitor when you run PG Bench. If you run PG Bench with a lot of connections from a, a single uh, VM, uh, maybe you are not at the full power because of that VM it itself. And I think that trading may help for that, but there are, there are other things also to look out. If you run PG Bench from a VN behind the network, uh, then maybe you have many sessions sending requests at the same time, but they are throttled by the network in the middle. So always also, also good to to look. For example, if you, if you expect to run 20 connections always active from the client, check on PG stat activity that they are active and not idle on, on a network uh, event. Yeah. How about HammerDB, Frank? Uh, did you try? Did you give a try HammerDB and how do you compare that with uh, PG Bench? Yeah, it's a bit similar. What I prefer, I think HammerDB in is Java and maybe it's easier to test connection pools. The workload itself is the, those benchmarks, many benchmarks try to reproduce the TPCC benchmark, which is, I don't know, 30 years old or 40 years old, and <laughs> has, has nothing to do with current applications. Yep. The, the, the TPCC benchmark was simulating users behind a screen, uh, a, a single screen, not, not, uh, uh, not being able to do something else, and, and trying to simulate order entry and then some think time, um, really like like application may be working a, a long time ago, but not today. So I'm I'm not a big fan of TPCC benchmarks um, because it was it was built for a specific purpose and and mostly it's used uh, more for marketing numbers and and uh, things like that. For me, there are two interesting benchmarks. Either you want to test your platform or you want to test what you can do with your application. If you want to test your platform, then micro benchmark like Sysbench, for example, where you run something specific. You want to see how far you can go with multiple sessions committing uh, uh, 1,000, 10,000 commits per second. Then do only that short transaction commit. Do not try to update uh, too many things uh, because it will wait on 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 logs on on something else. Just macro benchmark to focus on what you want to measure. And on the other side, if you want to simulate an application, and I know it's more difficult, um, try to simulate the, the the critical use cases of your applications uh, to see how far you can go. But in this case, I'm not interested so much about the numbers that 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 will say, yeah, you can do uh, uh, 1,000 transactions per second for the application. I'm more interested to look at the system when it is running to see if I have any bottleneck. 
Of course, at some point you do a benchmark to do some to put some numbers on a PowerPoint. But the most interesting for me is to see if there are bottlenecks. If I can run a use case for my my, my application at one thousand transactions per second, I want to know why I cannot go beyond this one thousand. Exactly. Is the li is the limit on CPU, and then I can add more CPU. Is the limit on on disk? I I, I can add more disk. Is the limit on network sync with a standby that is in sync? That will be more difficult because I I I, I cannot avoid that. So most important is, is is knowing the limit to know what we can scale. That's a very good point because uh, typically people just look at the TPS, right? <laughs> They won't look at the other bottle like CPU, I/O, memory. So yeah, that's a really great recommendation. And, there. and also the execution plans. Before taking any com conclusion, be sure that you have the right execution plan. Uh, probably for the generic benchmarks, probably they are created with the right indexes. Uh, but ju just be sure that everything is, is works well before giving some some numbers. How about uh, some uh, options, right? In PG Bench, for example, there is minus N, which means do not do auto vacuum. Yeah. Uh, remember, uh, and then there is also other flag called minus L or something I forgot, which is going to record the per query stats or something, which is going to add overhead, right? Like it, it is going to give a incorrect TPS in my view because it's adding overhead because it's recording stats per query. Uh, so any recommendation on other other flags like uh, minus n? So, yeah, minus n is, is because PG Bench by default runs a vacuum before. It's also always good to have a benchmark that is reproducible, that doesn't depend on, on other parameters. Uh, so yeah, maybe good. I, I, I run it a lot with Yugabyte DB that has a different storage uh, than Postgres and there is no vacuum. So I use a lot the no vacuum just because I use it on, on Yugabyte DB, but on Postgres makes sense. Uh, some, something else also that is very important. I think that on Postgres, you need to run the benchmark long enough because in Postgres, the, the performance is usually not homogeneous. Uh, you have checkpoints. Uh, yeah. If your benchmark doesn't cover uh, checkpoints, for example, if you run a benchmark a very short time, it can be quite fast. If you do not account for checkpoints, if you do not account for vacuum, then Postgres is really fast. But this fast is not sustainable. At yeah. some point, it has to checkpoint. At, at, at some point, it has to vacuum. So a benchmark should cover multiple cycles of a checkpoint on multiple cycles of vacuum to be sure that you have something that covers everything. In the options, um, using also yeah, using prepared statement is probably a good idea, except if you really want to measure the CPU that is used to parse the statement. But probably if if you want to 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 simulate a real application, it, it should spend more time executing the, the statement rather than compiling. So that's that's a good idea. Um, there are options also to see individual latency. That's also good. There are options also to discard uh, the long ones because what usually what we want is not an average. A, a, a number that average over one hour may not be really what we want. Usually we want performance in percentile. We accept that sometimes there are some higher latency. What we want is that 90% of, of the time, uh, the response time is in a millisecond, for example. So that, that's also something, discarding the, the, the long ones.